Tell me a little bit about what it is that you do. Well, I am a captain on charter boats, and I am also a mate aboard this boat here, Gene B. Uh, and what we do is we take people out um, for afternoon cruises on the Pamlico Sound. Uh, a lot of what we do um, is based on family groups and businesses who simply want to take their friends out for an afternoon, um, and they can bring dinner aboard, and, and it's essentially a floating party. And we have a good time most of the time. How did you get involved doing this? Uh, Paul Del Rio actually came to me and asked me if I wanted to crew for a day. And I did pretty well and he was impressed, so he asked me to come aboard. And uh, that's how it all started. Um, I've been sailing since I was young and I've uh, been on many boats myself. And uh, it was a good way to have a summer job. Okay. Um, is this something that you've always been interested in, or did you just like find yourself doing it one day? Well, I, uh, I've been on the boat and down the water since I was three, um, so I've been doing it since I was a small child, and I always kind of grew up with it, mm -hmm. so it was a major part of my life and my childhood. What kind of places have you been to? I uh, traveled up and down the east coast for boats. Um, last winter we tried to make a trip to the Bahamas and had to turn back because of weather. Um, I'll be circumnavigating in another two years going around the world uh, on my own vessel. What's been your favorite place that you've been to? Favorite place I've been to is probably Charleston, South Carolina. It's a very boat friendly, lots of sailors down there. It's a good place. So how did you become a captain? Like what kind of process is it? Uh, to start out becoming a captain, you have to have a year at sea. Uh, it has to be recorded and documented and signed off by the captains of the vessels that you served on. Uh, once you've attained that, that's the big speed bump to get over. After that, you go through a week-long training course, and you take exams as part of that as well. Um, once you finish your exams, you've got paperwork packets to fill out, and that gets approved by the government and the Coast Guard, and they eventually send you your license as a captain. So how long have you been a captain? I've been a captain for about a year. Cool. Um, you have a boat, right? I've got seven. Seven? Wow. Why do you have seven boats? You can never have too many. Um, I started out sailing on small boats, mm -hmm. and as I got better at it, I wanted something bigger, and it kind of, uh, kind of snowballed, and now I've wound up with a 34-foot schooner. Wow. And uh, I've got a 27-foot sloop just down the water here. Okay. So, like, what's the naming process for boats? Boats who generally have female names because they're referred to in the female mm -hmm. uh, aspect. Uh, most of the time, it's because of a lover or someone you care for. Um, wife, sweetheart, something like that. Um, the vessel name also has a lot to do with luck. Mm -hmm. um, sailors are fairly superstitious when it comes to the sea and ocean. Having a good boat name, one that you trust, it kind of builds. Um, so when you're naming a boat, you want to have a good name, something that rings and something that means has a meaning to you. So what made you decide to start your blog? Um, I started my blog... Uh, for the main reason that a lot of my friends didn't know where I was. Mm -hmm. um, I spent so much time on the water and traveling that I'd end up in different parts of the country and my friends would ask me, what's going on? You want to hang out this weekend? And I'd, I'd be six or seven hundred miles away. Um, it was also a good way for me to keep up with my own blogs and journals and allow other people to partake in the adventure because it's always nice to share the travels. What's the best and worst experience you've had working on the water? Let's see. The best experience I've had working on the water is when I can take people out, especially kids that have never been on a big boat or never been out to sea, and they can experience that firsthand for themselves, and it allows me to relive part of that adventure spirit that I had. Um, any per sailor will tell you that the worst experience is being in a storm. Um, there's plenty of those out there as well. Um, we've been in some pretty rough weather. Just, it's nothing fun. <laughs> you just can't wait for it to end. Yeah. So you used to work on the Genie B, or you still do? Still working on the Genie B. What um, do you do? Well, when Paul's not working over there, um, we do just about as much work as anyone else. I'll do a lot of the service work, uh, rigging, and 
most of the sailing I can do myself too. Um, for a 72 foot boat, you can run her with one person. Mm -hmm. um, so it helps to be a jack of all trades. Okay. How do you think working on the water has influenced your life? Working on the water has given me a career and a life path that I didn't have before. Um, when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, I didn't really have anything to pick from, and it sort of just snapped in place and felt right. Um, so working on the water has given me a fulfillment that a lot of other jobs have. What's your favorite thing about working on the water? Let's see. My favorite thing about working on the water is the fact that everything's unexpected. Each day is something new, and it's always a surprise. So it never gets boring. I don't know that we do that. Many people ask us if we're traveling somewhere uh, or if we're located up north where a lot of the other tall ships are. Um, but being a part of Tall Ships International, we work right here, uh, right in our own backyard. So what's the chartering process like? chartering process is fairly easy. Um, you simply call the phone number or you look up the website on the brochure and uh, you'll talk to Captain Paul directly and he can set up a schedule for you. Um, generally we're flexible. We have four or five week-long trips with Boy Scout troops going out this summer. Um, but we have time during the weekends in between there to run charters as well. Um, we normally run three trips uh, in the afternoon. We'll run an early afternoon, a mid-afternoon, and a late afternoon sunset trip. Uh, each of those trips is about two hours long. Um, so it's, it's well worth the money if you want to come out sailing for an afternoon on a tall ship. Um, we involve the crew in everything we do, um, including guests. We'll have you raise the sails and show you how to do everything. And uh, it's a hands-on experience. How many charters would you say that you've done? I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I've done <laughs> so many. Um, 150, maybe more. Wow. Uh, and that's just in a season. So we keep pretty busy during the summertime. But we operate all the way through the winter.